You know how I'm always sharing the tools our team uses to help our agency run more smoothly? Today, I'm sharing another tool for podcasting. We just moved over to Anchor after having our first 250 podcasts posted and distributed on Libsyn. Anchor is a podcasting platform by Spotify, and it intrigued me as a solution for monetization of content and sponsorship. It also has some cool tools for those of you who haven't started a podcast yet to help promote your business that allow you to easily record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. It also acts as a distributor, allowing listeners just like you the ability to tune in from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other platforms. And guess what? It's free. Yep, super cool. So you might as well at least check it out, and maybe you'll find that podcasting is your next go-to marketing tool, or at least a hobby. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, just visit anchor.fm to give it a try today. Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacey Jones, the founder of influencer marketing and branded content agency, Hollywood Branded. This podcast provides brand marketers a learning platform for top experts to share their insights and knowledge on topics which make a direct impact on your business today. While it is impossible to be well-versed on every topic and strategy that can improve bottom line results, my goal is to help you avoid making costly mistakes of time, energy, or money, whether you are doing a DIY approach or hiring an expert to help. Let's begin today's discussion. Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. Here's your host, Stacy Jones. Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacy Jones, and I'm so happy to be here with you all today and want to give a very warm welcome to Dylan Oglein. Dylan is the founder of Ogline Digital and is a leading expert in direct response advertising and business growth. He has also created a digital agency ownership training program to help teach others how to have more freedom and live a life with purpose and meaning. Dylan's training programs are designed to take the guesswork out of building an agency and remove all of the unknowns that stop so many people from starting their own businesses. Today, Dylan's gonna be sharing his advice on direct response digital marketing. We'll learn what works from his perspective, what should be avoided, and how some businesses miss the mark. Dylan, welcome. So happy to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Stacey. Glad to be here. Of course. So before we dry, dive into direct response and just individual advertising in general and all those good things, mm -hmm. can you tell our listeners a little bit more about you? What got you to here today? Because you have an interesting story because you are a high school dropout, I read. Yes, that, that I am. Um, so how did I get here? Uh, so I started my first business when I was 14, uh, 13, 14. And uh, I was, this is back, uh, back whenever Google AdWords was just starting out. Uh, my business was selling cell phones, uh, flipping cell phones on eBay. And then I had a forget, it wasn't Shopify. This is pre Shopify. This is a long time ago. Uh, but I was flipping cell phones. I'd buy them from a wholesaler in Europe, ship them to the United States and, and uh, sell them for like a 10, 20% markup, something like that. But uh, this is back in the beginning of Google AdWords. I don't even think Facebook had started yet. So this is like 2003, 2004, somewhere around there. And I started playing around with it. And it just fascinated me because it was this game-changing idea of, of marketing. Uh, and I had read a couple of marketing books at the same time, did a little bit with my business. And then that business ended up getting shut down because my merchant account provider found out that I was uh, under the age of 18. I think that happened ah. around, around tax time. They found out uh, uh, this guy's a little too young for this. So they shut me down and I spent the, the next 12 years bouncing around between different business ideas, getting absolutely nowhere. The main thing that I did for, for income essentially was agency work. I was doing websites, logos, uh, banner designs. Banner designs used to be a huge thing. Uh, but there was always like this marketing backdrop. Mm -hmm. And finally, in uh, it was like 2016 or so, uh, was getting absolutely nowhere, but spoke with a long-term mentor, scrapped all the business projects I was working on. Uh, focused on one single service, which was the digital marketing management, and uh, spent the next you know three years getting really really good at that and scaling my agency up. And uh, here we are. That was that was. Did I do that in under like a minute? Do you think <laughs> it's pretty close? Yeah, of yeah. course. That's and the journey. So so. You literally went high school dropout, selling phones, 
where you were making money, but you were told you were too young. So you had to stop that to then trying to find yourself for quite some time before you stumbled upon and decided to sink your teeth into digital advertising and marketing. That's, that's, that's some summarizes 17 years right there. Yes. It's a quick 17 years. I'm sure. Yes. (laughs) But yeah. So what is it that you love about digital advertising? You know, besides the fact that you're like, this is it, I did it and it centered me and I have a business and it's going strong and we consistently hit seven figures every year, which is phenomenal. You know, you've worked really hard to be able to get there and do that. But why do you love digital marketing so much? Uh, once, once I got really good at it, the part that I probably enjoyed the most was if you're doing it right, you're not, uh, it's different in the big way. It's different from traditional media, like a TV ad or something like that, where you're, you're almost trying to convince somebody to use your product or service. If you're doing Facebook, Google, YouTube ads, et cetera, if you're doing them right, you're introducing your product or service to people who didn't even know that they wanted it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, like uh, I've, I've talked about this before. If you, if you're getting comments on your Facebook ads, like I'm so glad I found this product or service, whatever, like that's when you know you're getting it right. Uh, now that I've gotten really good, that just, I, I enjoy that so much being mm-hmm. able to introduce products and services to people. Uh, that uh, didn't even know that they wanted them. Uh, what uh, I would say before that, what I liked about it so much was it gave a business the ability to purchase growth. If you had your Facebook ads, if you had your Google ads, if you had all those things dialed in and figured out, uh, growing wasn't a question. It was just increase your ad spend. So then you could manage other parts of your business and just scale things up. That's a game changer for many digital businesses and even brick and mortar businesses. It's an absolute game changer. And do you think that still holds true today with all the changes going on with Facebook and how they're, you know, with cookies and Google and all the massive marketplace shifts that are happening right now? Mm -hmm. um, Do you think dialing in on your digital is still the number one way to drive your growth? Unquestionably, more so every single day. And what are some of the impacts that you've seen lately with changes in laws? Uh, changes in laws, did you say? Laws or restrictions or, you know, how Apple is changing the landscape, Google's changing the landscape. Um, they're not allowing, you know, again, you know, cookies being one of the biggest issues, being able to mm-hmm. uh, laser in on your demographic and have so much insight. Now they're pulling back a lot of the detail and data. Do you think that's impacting people? Is it impacting people? Unquestionably. Uh, for us, I, I have built the way I do marketing. I have built my agency in such a way that, that those things almost don't matter. Like it's built into the processes, the systems, and the way we do things that things are always going to change. Uh, I've, I've heard people, it was, it was iOS 14 or whatever, the big Apple update. I think that's what it was. Uh, people were panicking. They're like, Facebook ads aren't going to work anymore. And I fundamentally believe that will changes happen? Will targeting changes you know, happen? Will Facebook change the way that you input ads or whatever? All those things, you know, they're different now than what they were a year ago and they will continue to change and change and change. But the fundamental law remains that these companies are incentivized for you to succeed. Facebook's not gonna make money if it's advertisers aren't making money, Google is not going to make money. They're going to run out of money if people aren't making money by advertising on their platforms. Yeah. You as the advertiser or as the agency might need to change the way that you do things. But that's just like, you know, if you throw up an ad on Facebook, it's going to reach fatigue and you got to create a new ad. You got to come up with new copy. It's just a change you got to make. And, and that's my philosophy on, on marketing. And I apply that to my agency. So when, you know, Apple changes things. It's just, hey, it's another change we got to deal with. But the the baseline still is, is that these companies are incentivized to see you succeed and to see you grow and to see you make money off of advertising on their platforms. As long as that is still there, digital marketing is definitely the way to go. 
And I fully agree with you. I think it's interesting how many people are heading to the hills and screaming from the tops of the mountaintops that, you know, life is over as we know it as digital advertisers when there's no way that Facebook and Apple and Google are cutting off their noses to spite yeah. their own faces on this. Yeah. Well, it, it's, I, I would argue one of the things is it's, uh, even if the laws change, like the, the federal government gets involved in these things, like Facebook's going to figure it out. Like, unless Facebook shuts down, Facebook advertising is still going to work. Yeah. Unless Google shuts down, Google ads are still going to work. The laws might change. You know, we might, there might be some law that uh, YouTube ads are limited to 15 seconds. Like that would be stupid, but it might happen. And if it happens, like we'll just have to deal with it. It's YouTube advertising is still going to work. Facebook might make a change where you can no longer have a picture with your ad. It can only be text. That would be really stupid. But if it did, like Facebook advertising is still going to work. You just got to learn how to deal with that. It's just uh, things are always going to change and you have to be prepared for that. Yeah, I'm not running for the hills, that's for sure. Things are better than ever, if you ask me. <laughs> Besides change, what mm -hmm. are some of the things going on in marketing right now in the digital space that are impacting um, advertisers that brands need to be aware of? I would, oh, this is a good one. Uh, I view the change, and I know you said besides changes, but but I think this is important. I view the changes that are happening is, especially with targeting, like Facebook targeting is getting less specific that we can do on our end, right? Facebook is still doing the targeting on the back end, but it's not like Mark Zuckerberg is sitting back there like, mm, I'm going to show this ad to, to, you know, white males between this and this age who have a college education or something like that. Like that's not what's happening. I think all of these platforms are moving more towards relying on the AI and the algorithms to, to make their advertisers better. So you might not have as much control, uh, but the changes that are happening, it's, it's, it's in our, it's behind, you know, Behind the curtain, we might not see what's going on with the targeting and things like that. Facebook is doing it or Google well, AdWords is a little different, but uh, these platforms are now taking the targeting and, get, and putting the control in their hands and into the hands of the algorithm. And that's a very good thing for, for marketers. Did that answer your question in a roundabout yes. way, even though I talked about change? <laughs> yeah, it does. So what are some of the areas that you, when you're working with a brand and they're coming on board to, with your agency that you focus on first, how do you figure out how to kick off and dial in and drill in on getting them started with you all on the path that you have planned? Most of the time, uh, a lot of brands are making their, their marketing too complicated. I'm, I'm really big into just simplifying things. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, uh, we, we deal with a lot of brick and mortar businesses, a lot of blue collar businesses. Uh, we're moving now more towards into like e-commerce and things like that. Mm -hmm. But especially businesses like that, they're used to say doing a billboard ad and like listing all their services on the billboard ad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas like my philosophy is, is like, put up a billboard ad with like one word on it. Like that's the, that's the dream right there. If you could get to that level of marketing, uh, whereas they're used to like just cramming as much information into it as possible. So really simplifying things, getting it down into, uh, you know, every business is different, but just trying to get it down into the, the absolute simplest process we could, you know, the mm -hmm. dream would be, uh, a Facebook ad with one word. And that word is the link to a landing page where the person puts in their email. And like the, the simple, the cleaner that landing page could be, the cleaner the ad could be, the more, uh, the less products and services we're advertising, the more dialed in we can get with that, the better. Mm -hmm. so just keep things simple. Simplicity be. is the goal here. Yeah, absolutely. That's something I really hammer down with the clients we work with. You like lots of white space around things. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, yeah. If we can get if we can get like Apple level marketing where it's just like the phone and a white void, like hell yeah, like that's that's <laughs> what I want. <laughs> And then you can do another simplistic campaign for another product that you're doing. And you could do another mm -hmm. one for another so that you're yes. actually dialing in and using all the AI and the targeting and your refocus you know, retargeting mm -hmm. campaigns that you can do it by service or product versus the whole kitchen sink at one time. Absolutely. Yeah. The more dialed in we can get it uh, uh, and then if it, if you're apple you know you would have a different landing page for each product you wouldn't throw all your products in in one image right. uh, but most businesses are just so used to that uh mm -hmm. used to like that old marketing thought and uh and then what happens is is, is you allow you know facebook as an example to work its magic and figure out what people are more most interested in that product in a blank void <laughs> and the better uh because you're not going to be able to figure that out you think you're really smart out there as an agency owner as an example you think you know what the target audience is but you know nothing compared to what facebook does right and if, you, if you can let the algorithm work its magic it'll blow your any results that you could possibly get so it blows it away well, that's because it doesn't just look at this typical targeting that we do. It actually can take in your psychographics and all those other things that marketers think uh, are as being important, but then they still manage to dial back and be like, mm, psychographics, I don't know. I want to, nope, it's definitely 25 to 35. That's my audience. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nope. 25 to 35 year olds, it's just them. Yeah. Yeah. People, which I think where that comes from is when you, you, you probably go back, I mean, this is before my time, you go back 30, 40 years ago with marketing and the idea of like, hmm, we could like, we can target our marketing to like just males or just uh, this age bracket. Like that was game changing in the marketing industry. Yeah. Uh, but now we're kind of going the other way where instead of getting really, really dialed in with your targeting, uh, you get very broad with your targeting and then let a computer which can figure it out well but way better than you can let that do the work uh that's yeah. and i think that's been I mean, that's definitely been happening for say five or six years but it, now it's it just keeps getting better and better every day what are the biggest mistakes besides too many cluttered words not enough area to breathe that you see brands making Oh, uh, wanting to try too many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is most of the time when, when we're working with, I, I don't work with a lot of big brands. Most, I'm typically working with smaller businesses uh, and then scaling things up with them uh, and, and helping their businesses grow. Uh, but so I don't know if this is necessarily an issue with bigger brands, but with the smaller businesses, say less than a million a year in revenue, a lot of them are like, we need to try everything. So they're, we need to do, be doing Google and Facebook and YouTube. And I've heard a lot about this TikTok and mm -hmm. Snapchat ads. We need to be doing that. And I, I want banner ads everywhere and to just trying to do way too many things. Uh, not only, you know, they're splitting their budget around, but they're never really getting good at one thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to really, it's, it's that simplicity approach, <laughs> really scale clients back and be like, you know, maybe we will get to, to Facebook and Google and YouTube and, and all these different things. But like, let's get really good at one single thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, a, that's a big mistake. Did that answer your question? I think it it does. I can't tell you how many people are like, TikTok, TikTok, we have to do TikTok now. I'm like, well, what are you doing for, you know, general social media that you're doing in other things and who's your demographic i don't know everyone's talking about tiktok we really should be doing tiktok right now it's a shiny object syndrome it's it's always chasing missing out. the newest missing things out on tiktok and there's also i i think it's like um it's almost like chasing bitcoin or something like that where people they'll hear about somebody who's getting incredible results on tiktok or snap i don't even know can you do tiktok advertising i don't even know <laughs> You can, you can. I, I do a whole advertising class with them. Yes, they actually have some training that's pretty good. 
I, I, it's, it's just like Snapchat, you know, people will hear about, you know, the incredible results a company is getting. And, and I'm like, well, that person probably is getting incredible results, but they probably just threw something up and just so happened to hit a, a, a home run their first at bat. That doesn't prove that the, that that marketing channel works and, and that platforms probably doesn't have really good tools yet. Whereas Facebook and Google, these things are tried and true. Like we know they work and you can just be, you could be okay at Facebook ads and still get incredible returns. You have to be, you have to hit the home run your first at bat on say TikTok or whatever, because it's not tried and true. Nobody really knows what they're doing yet. So I like to, you know, five years from now, talk to me about TikTok ads. <laughs> then I might be interested if it's still around. But okay. right now I like to, to keep, keep it to the, the, the simple tried and true methods. And not feeling like your clients are missing out if they're not doing it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, when I was doing your introduction, you know, I touched on direct response. And mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of people think that anything in digital and our agency does influencer marketing. So anything in influencer marketing as well results in immediate sales. Immediate, like no matter what you put it out there, you are going to get a sale. And mm -hmm. what you do with digital advertising is a little bit more dialed into potentially that result than what I yes. do with influencer marketing, which is more of a brand awareness where you're not going to necessarily yield 100% sales right away or any sales right away because mm -hmm. you are not a magic hair elixir, diet tea, something that people are racing to and they have to have because it's so life changing. Um, but you're more so using influencers to replace your traditional ads in print magazines. And you know, there's someone's leafing through a magazine, seeing, you know, L'Oreal here and L'Oreal there and L'Oreal here. And you're finally like, oh, I'd like to actually try that, you know, yeah. lipstick that looks cool. And so that's how influencer marketing is working. But with digital and direct response, you can dial in a little bit more, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You have, uh, yeah, you're talking, you're talking about, brand about brand awareness. awareness. No, I um, do brand awareness. I think you do actual. Yeah. For yes. us, we do direct response. Uh, it's our goal is it depends on each client, but you know, the person sees the ad, they click it and they're taken to a landing page or something like that. And they're taking a direct action. It might be a actual purchase. You're you know, clicking to the next page and entering your credit card information to buy, or it might be a, uh, say a plumbing and heating company where the person's putting in their information for somebody to reach out and give them a quote or something like that is a direct actual response. And that's just my area of expertise. Your, if you're talking about brand awareness and things like that, that's totally fine. That's, that's a social ROI, uh, and which can play dividend or pay dividends long-term. Uh, it's, it's very smart, especially for big brands. Uh, if you're talking about L'Oreal or, or mm -hmm. Nike or Coke or like that, that's all Coke does is, is the big brand awareness campaigns uh, for small businesses though. Uh, yeah. I'm all, I'm all about the, the direct response. Yeah. Getting a direct purchase or request for more information or something like that. So brand comes on board. It's a hand sanitizer, right? And there's lots of hand sanitizers, right? But this one, this is a special, super fantastic, wonderful, life-changing hand sanitizer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Smells great. Feels great. Everyone loves a hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. What would your first steps be for them to start a campaign? Uh, how much is their product? Their product is, let's just say you can, it's like $15 a bottle. 15 bucks a bottle. What's their profit margin? Profit <laughs> margin is going to be um, probably 60 to 70% minimum. 60 to 70%. I wouldn't take them on as a client. <laughs> and that's just because that's outside of my area of expertise okay. for, for direct response. Uh, so we, me, I focus on Facebook, Google, uh, and YouTube. Mm -hmm. And typically those platforms are best for um, uh, typically high profit margin, at least typically over at the bare, bare minimum, a hundred dollars purchase. Okay. Uh, if you're not getting a hundred dollars purchase, it's tough to make a profit uh, on say Facebook ads or something like that. If I had to take on that client, I would try to, 
again, this is outside of my wheelhouse, but I would be thinking like, what about Amazon uh, or something like that? Like, can we do, uh, I, this is outside of my wheelhouse. Can we do Amazon advertising? Can we push up your campaign or can we push up your product listing there? Mm -hmm. How do we drive more purchases there? I would, I would probably be focused more on, more on something like that. And then uh, why, why do you say if something's not going to sell for over a hundred dollars, it's harder to get sales on digital platforms from your experience? I mean, I'm not, and I'm not debating, cost. This with you. I'm just wondering that's yeah. For insights cost. Yeah. It's, it's okay. just simply uh, it's there's, you need to get, if you're selling a thousand dollar product mm -hmm. with a 90% profit margin, mm -hmm. you can mess up a lot of stuff and still be very profitable on Facebook. If you're selling a $15 product with a 60% product margin, you need to be like really, really good <laughs> to make say Facebook ads work. Uh, I would take a look at Google ads and, and see like what would, but I don't, I don't think most people will be searching hand sanitizer. Uh, oh, but, but they it, were last year. Oh well, yeah, last <laughs> year, that that. Was, <laughs> last year that was a very easy market. Was because of last year. <laughs> uh, but it comes down to, uh, just, uh, the, th the amount of things that you can mess up. You can be just okay at Facebook ads. And again, if you have a 90, uh, not a thousand dollar product at a 90% profit margin, you can be just okay at it. And you're still going to do really, really good at Facebook ads where when you get into a low profit margin, uh, or, you know, just a low dollar amount product, it becomes really, really difficult and you need to get absolutely everything dialed in. I, I would talk to the hand sanitizer company. I'd be like, what are your thoughts on like a subscription model or something like that? <laughs> that's, okay. that's a thought I just had. Okay. But look, I'm looking around my house, just seeing what I have. I happen to have a jar of hand sanitizer. Yeah, of hand sanitizer. Let me just use that for the example right there. Yes. Perfect. And then what about services? So are service businesses different? So with how they're approaching or is it exactly the same way as a product business when you're working with them on you know, direct response and digital advertising? Pretty much the same, yeah. I, um, I don't think there's much different of a pro, I don't take much of a different approach when it comes to services versus products. I don't think I do okay. off the top of my head, no. And then okay. what about classes with this whole advent, especially with the last year with COVID, it was already going this way. Mm -hmm. Everyone is now coaching and teaching and has classes and look at yep. this package. Is that different? Well, one thing I would add there, uh, because I, um, I do, I've worked with a couple of info product businesses on their marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many people doing coaching and, and, and whatnot is to get very niche down. The more, uh, I think it's fantastic what is happening with online education, where now there's courses on everything, like everything under the sun. But if you have a course on how to start, uh, how to, <laughs> how to how to start an e-commerce business mm -hmm. that's very broad yeah. but if you have a course on one of the the most successful people i know of in that industry uh how to start a um a accounting and bookkeeping business mm -hmm. that's that's more niche down so mm -hmm. so my advice to anybody who's doing that is to try to get niche down and try to solve a very specific problem for a very specific industry. This way you stand out by being uh you know the the one and only and the best in that market. That's the that would be my my suggestion to them. Is that really any different than if you're a product with that advice? No, but I think a lot of people miss that for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't, I don't have an answer as to why that is. Like you see people who are like, I'm a business coach or I'm a business consultant. And I'm like, yeah. And you and like a million other dudes, <laughs> like you need to get more, like if you specifically only help uh, a, a, a certain type of um, law firms or something, you only help, 
I don't know a lot about law firms, but the more specific you can get and you only help them grow their practice or something. And that's just an idea I randomly had. <laughs> that's the direction you want to go is getting very specific on the solution that you, that you provide. Well, that's what you did for yourself, right? You were going over, you were doing things all over the place. And then your mentor said, you need to dial in and you need to focus with your digital marketing services and just focus on what you're doing within a specific area. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it was beyond, I didn't, it was, I did logos and websites and, and this and that, and you needed, you needed a PDF made. I'm like I could get it done. I was your guy for that. <laughs> Uh, I, so I, I didn't really, I wasn't known for anything. I wasn't known as really good at anything. On top of that, I had like nine other businesses I was running and mm -hmm. I was going in so many different directions. Uh, so I never really got good at one particular thing. Right. And then I narrowed down on just, on just on one of those businesses and just one service within those business, uh, within that business. That makes sense. And then what are other things that brand managers should be aware of when they're approaching digital marketing, whether for the first time or after, you know, decades of experience of working within the field? What are things that they should be aware of? Aware of, concerned of, cautious of, or seize the bull by the horn and run with because it's the best thing ever under the sun. It, I, would, I would go with the latter there of it is... If you if you're looking to to grow, I am I am just absolutely convinced. If you're looking to grow your business, figuring out digital marketing, Facebook, Google, YouTube. Uh, don't waste your time on Snapchat just yet. <laughs> if you can figure those things out, it makes so many other things in your business so much easier. Uh, you have the ability to now buy growth. You're not wondering how am I going to scale the business up? And, and once you figure it out, the ability to scale up is you're not talking 20% growth this year. You're talking like 20% growth every month or a hundred percent growth every month. And what will limit you like so many businesses, you go back 10 to 15 years ago, like the entire business world, the question was like, how do I get more customers? How do I get more growth? But once you figure this stuff out, the, 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 uh, the issue with growth becomes, how do I hire more salespeople? How do mm -hmm. I scale up my sales team faster? Because I have an unlimited amount of leads that I could give them. Right. And it, then you can shift your, your focus. So shifting your mindset to just realizing how powerful this stuff can be for your business. I think that's probably, probably be the advice I would give. Well, Dylan, how can our listeners learn more about you? How can they find you? Uh, you can find me on the, the LinkedIn's and the, the Instagram's and the Facebook's at Dylan Ogline. Uh, my website is DylanOgline.com. And then my agency is OglineDigital.com. Okay. And then you also have a book, Six Steps to a Six-Figure Agency, I believe. Yep. It's a, it's a free book I put out, uh, uh, dylanoogline.com uh, slash uh, six, all spelled out S-I-X. Perfect. And that's going to be in the show notes. So it's going to be easy for people to see. Makes it easy. Yeah. There you and go. And then if we had some last parting words of advice to our listeners today, what would you leave them with? Uh, don't run for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> with with changes uh i think that's probably the best thing we talked about was um you know for for those out there who are an agency owner or who are already in you know doing marketing and whatnot you need to really shift yourself to being comfortable with these changes like absolutely nobody has has a problem with hey, I have this Facebook ad, it's getting fatigued, results are dropping, I need to put a new Facebook ad. Nobody has any problem with that. Nobody's running for the hills and saying Facebook's not going to work because I need to put a new ad up. Right. Nobody does that. Uh, so don't be scared about Facebook changes or Apple changes or the law changing. Like really shift your mindset to be comfortable and realize that this is an extremely powerful tool that we have in front of us. And the, the only con is that things are constantly changing, but 
the world's always changing. So it's no different than anything else. So just be aware of that and be totally comfortable so that this way, when Facebook makes changes or the law changes or Apple puts out iOS 32, it doesn't really matter. It's just a, you know, we need to figure out this new, new element of it. I think that would be, that would be the, the main point there. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think those are excellent points. And I think it's also, you know, going back to the point that you made earlier in our conversation of keep things simple, right? So also try not to, uh, grab onto everything under the sun, thinking that that's going to take you um, to your win and dial in focus and actually do, you know, target in on your own brand on what you're trying to get other people to know about. Absolutely. Step the by more, step versus yeah. like scattergun approach for everywhere. <laughs> the easier, the, the less, the less clutter, uh, the more simple you can think, uh, make things uh, with your marketing and whatnot, with your branding, all of that stuff. That your that's that's a that's a good direction. If you look at like Apple, we talked about Apple briefly. Like that's what makes Apple good is that they try to keep everything just ridiculously simple. Like they take away that they're always trying to take things away to make it more simple and more easy to use. And they do the same thing with their their branding and their marketing. So should you. Figure out what's the powerful thing you want to say versus all the filler words that need to support it. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Dylan, thank you so much for joining today. Really, really appreciate it. I think you gave some awesome insights for our listeners and appreciate awesome. your time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Of course. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in today to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I look forward to chatting with you this next week. Have a great time.